morning, Rajni Kumar, sir. Uh, good morning. Sir, would you like to come on the video? Ah, uh, yeah. Good morning, sir. Nice to see you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Good morning, one and all. Uh, as a part of EPG Patishala and uh, Consortium for Educational Communication, undergraduate CEC, we are conducting uh, webinars. And today, webinar topic is Yoga in Biomechanics Prospective. And uh, this session is uh, handled by Dr. R. Rajnikumar, sir, who is Assistant Professor, Department of Exercise Physiology and Biomechanics. Tamil Nadu Physical Education Sports University. We welcome you, sir, and over to you, sir. Uh, shall I begin? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Ilgovan, sir, uh, for giving me an opportunity to interact with all yogis uh, who are living with yogi principles. And uh, uh, Dr. Ilagavan, sir, has been uh, uh, known to me uh, about uh, more than two decades. And uh, uh, sir has been doing a lot of uh, promotional activities, uh, developmental activities uh, towards yoga. And uh, with this, uh, sir requested me about uh, taking a class on uh, yoga and biomechanics. Uh, so today the topic is yoga. Uh, yeah, uh, how yoga is related to biomechanics. How biomechanics uh, principles can be applied in yoga. Um, so with this uh, Thanksgiving note uh, to Dr. Ilangovan and uh, his students and scholars. So I uh, just begin the class. Okay. Uh, Sri Devi is there. Uh, can you permit me to share the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, Sri Devi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Now you yeah. can do it, sir. You got the option, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yoga in biomechanics perspective is the topic uh, we are going to discuss today. Um, yeah. So uh, yoga in bi biomechanics perspective is the topic we are today. And uh, the bi word biomechanics, the word biomechanics uh, is uh, an age-old term and uh, if you see we practice biomechanics in everyday life without our knowledge so unknowingly we do uh, follow principles including uh, some movements skills by applying biomechanical principles so today what we are going to see is uh, what is biomechanics how this biomechanics principles can be applied in yoga. Uh, so that is the topic of our discussion today. And so the word biomechanics. So, um, biomechanics means it is related to physics and uh, most of the people uh, even uh, they do not choose this subject because it is complicated and they are supposed to uh, study a lot of subjects because since it is an applied science. But here so I would like to um, give you some basic information, rudimentary information with regard to biomechanics. So uh, being yoga practitioners, I know very well you all have a treasury of knowledge with regard to yoga, yogic philosophy, yogic methodology, and uh, alternative therapy, yoga therapy, and everything. But with regard to biomechanics, biomechanics is a basic subject, right? 
it is a basic subject and it, these principles can uh, are applied in all movement sciences whether it is sir we are unable to hear you sir there is some uh, signal problem rajni kumar sir can you hear us sir rajni kumar sir can you hear to us sir uh can you hear me now yes sir yes sir ah oh, yeah sir? fine uh and uh, if you see uh, uh, biomechanics uh the basic uh, subjects we we are supposed to follow are anatomy physiology kinesiology motor learning physics and technology so the base of these subjects will help us to move further in applying the principles of biomechanics unless we are thorough with these subjects biomechanical analysis is not possible and anatomy you all people uh, not only yoga professionals with regard to any movement science population or professionals they are supposed to study right from mbbs paramedical courses physical education professionals biomechanics sports coaching and all movement science uh, professionals they are supposed to study anatomy and physiology so i need not uh, spend uh, much time on this uh, meaning of anatomy and physiology you all know so structure of the human body is anatomy physiology is the functions of human body and uh, when you start up with these two subjects anatomy and physiology the third one is kinesiology or kinesiology we say kinesiology is nothing but human movement so here comes how we apply the kinesiological concepts or uh, principles in practicing yoga because yoga is inbuilt about thousands of years ago yoga was uh, <clears throat> uh, was in existence and uh, our forefathers ancestors they studied they did some research and they have come out with technique any asana whether uh, for an example uh, we say hatha yoga and uh, whether it is pranayama whether it is asanas right so uh, in asanas and pranayama we use a technique the technique is because of the applying principles of biomechanics when you apply the principles of biomechanics the technique the ideal right technique emerges so uh, yoga professionals are uh, it is mandatory for the yoga professionals to have thorough knowledge with kinesiology which we are going to see uh, it is uh, today and uh, motor learning motor learning is nothing but uh, how our nervous system registers information by our practice so any skill or any movement can be learned a child uh, comes to this world and it starts crawling crawling walking running so those movements are learned similarly in yoga also we learn the movements we learn about asanas we we learn about asanas we learn about uh, uh, breathing technique right and physics so anatomy physiology kinesiology motor learning are around with and then we apply the principles of physics on the human movement so when you apply the principles of physics on the human movement it is called as biomechanics so kinesiology is the study of human movement and what is the difference between kinesiology and biomechanics biomechanics is something that when the principles of physics are applied on the human movement why should we apply the principles of biomechanics uh, i mean uh, why should we apply the principles of Uh, physics and human movement, right? So we have answer here. So apart from learning uh, physics, other components, we are supposed to learn about the technology also. So today, just a minute.
yeah i'm back so what is the meaning of biomechanics in one word if you want to say kinesiology means study of human movement kinesiology means study of human movement and biomechanics means application of physics principles on the human movement that's all why should we apply the physics principles on the human movement right so here we have an answer one is ideal technique when you apply the physics principles on the human movement you get an ideal technique what is the use of ideal technique ideal technique helps you to perform any activity with less expenditure of energy and it will reduce the risk of injury for an example see most of the uh, yoga practitioners uh, they just observe some yoga teachers or they read some yoga textbooks and they see some yoga videos and they do perform asanas but they do not know they may not aware whether they perform with ideal technique or not so here biomechanics comes for an aid to follow an ideal technique which will reduce the Uh, risk of injury and you can perform uh, the asana or even the mechanics of breathing we say we study so all these uh, movements can be performed with utmost perfection and ideal technique so that's why when you apply the physics of i mean uh, biomechanics principles of biomechanics you perform an activity with utmost perfection and ideal technique second one is the major component it will reduce the risk of injury so hope i have given you the basic rudimentary information with relate uh, with regard to biomechanics so biomechanics is essential uh, for any field which is having movement so here you can see uh, a slide which shows anatomy and physiology and uh, the whenever any movement uh, science any movement science you know, being you also one of the movement sciences any movement science uh, professional must be very very much skeletal system muscular system and nervous system and uh, which uh, which are the three pillars of the subject kinesiology and as i already told you here you study about kinesiology the human movement and apply the principles of physics on the human movement which is termed as which is called as biomechanics so what do we uh, uh, learn in biomechanics okay so what do we measure in biomechanics yoga professionals we perform any asana so asana the what is the uh, uh, big advantage of the greater advantage of asanas because any sport skill when we perform it is asymmetry asymmetry means so for an example if if i am a tennis left hand but asanas are not like that you perform on both sides so your structure becomes symmetrical equal importance is given both on right side and left side even when you perform surya namaskar even when you perform surya namaskar so uh, we both perform on both sides right equal number of repetitions are given e uh, equally uh, we uh, concentrate on both sides that's how our posture the strength flexibility everything is symmetrical so that is advantage of yogasana and here so uh, we uh, we can measure the muscle force when you perform any asana right and joint angle and uh, what is the stress in the uh, joints and compressive force tensile all this stuff we will see later in the presentation so this uh, <clears throat> uh picture uh, this slide shows you the clear information with regard to biomechanics and we move on to the next slide and uh, i just come out with uh, uh, basic information with regard to uh, yoga professionals what they are supposed to be thorough with first one is anatomical position right so i, uh, I this is anatomical position right and whenever you uh, want to practice any movement sciences you need to be with thorough with some of the terminologies i just go a little faster because these are all these are all basics and anatomical position you all people know right uh, and the second one is directional terminology and we use certain terms um, uh, with regard to uh, studying anatomy 
physiology, kinesiology, and biomechanics. So why should we thor be thorough with all this stuff? Because I am coming with uh, some basic information. Why? Because this information will help you apply the principles of biomechanics in asanas with regard to your breathing technique and everything. So directional de terminology, you can see here, the planes and axis and directional terminology. So we have three planes and three axes. Sagittal plane, which divides the body into right and left uh, equally, and uh, frontal plane, which divides the body front and back, that is anterior and posterior, right, equally, and the transverse plane, which <coughs> divides the body uh, into upper half, upper half and lower half. So these are the three planes. So why should we study about the planes? See, I, when you studied MSc or BSc, um, the anatomy teacher or lecturer would have come on and come to the class and taught you uh, during anatomy and kinesiology classes, uh, planes and axes. The purpose of studying planes and axes is only to analyze, right? Even the judges of yoga in a competition, they just observe the yoga performance of a competitor, right? And they award the marks. Similarly, whether a yoga practitioner right, performs the asana uh, what, uh, with utmost uh, technique, uh, I mean ideal technique, uh, or if he, ha if he has any deviancy, so this can be measured only with regard to planes and axis analysis. Right? So the three planes and axis uh, knowledge will help any yoga professional to analyze any performance scientifically. So whatever the information I share with you is all evidence-based and scientific. And you see, the directional terminology, the directional terminology is nothing but the superior, inferior, anterior, posterior, right? Superficial, deep. So these are all the uh, terminologies we uh, say with regard to anatomy and movement terminology. So we use certain terms with regard to movement in anatomy and physiology. So you know what is flexion, extension, right? Uh, then uh, abduction, adduction, internal rotation and external rotation. And just as a yoga professional, you must be very thorough with each and every joint's movement as well as the movement terminology. For an example, elbow. Elbow joint is called as radio. Uh, I mean, uh, elbow joint is having only uh, one movement. I mean, uh, only one movement called flexion and extension. These are the, this is the only movement uh, possible in elbow joint. So flexion and extension. Right? Shoulder joint, flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, internal rotation, external rotation, and circumduction. Right? Horizontal adduction. These are the uh, movements possible in shoulder joint. Okay. So I am not going to give you much information with regard to movement because as you people already may be knowing, or even in, in the discussion section, uh, we can have further uh, discussion. And you can see. Uh, Whenever you we study about biomechanics, right? The muscles are the components which generate force. The muscles are the uh, uh, organs which generate force. And there are three types of muscles majorly. One is um, cardiac muscle. Another one is uh, involuntary muscle. Another one is voluntary muscle. But here, what we are going to see is the voluntary muscle. Voluntary muscle. The other name of voluntary muscle is skeletal muscle. Why do we call it a skeletal muscle? Skeletal muscle is nothing but a muscle which is uh, connected with a skeleton, which is attached with a skeleton, right? Okay, what are the properties or characteristics of a skeletal muscle? First one is excitability. What is excitability? Excitability is nothing but a skeletal muscle will respond to a stimuli if it receives an impulse. Impulse is nothing but the information which is coming from the brain. When an impulse, right, when the impulse is sent to the muscle from the brain, the muscle fibers respond to the stimuli. This is the characteristic called excitability. It is also in other ways called as irritability. As a yoga professional, uh, 
because even when you do pranayama even when you perform asanas right skeletal muscles are the components which involve more and other uh, the, the second uh, component is contractility what is contractility ability to shorten and when stimulated for an example you want to flex your elbow okay so you want to flex your elbow the information is sent from your brain to the muscles through an impulse right and it reaches the neuromuscular junction of the joint and the muscle receives the impulse and responds to the stimuli that is excitability and the response is the contraction muscle shortens from its length whenever a muscle one i mean uh, generates a force that means it shortens from its length that is contractility and extensibility so this extensibility principle or property is much uh, related to asanas uh, as far as yoga is concerned extensibility means the muscle can stretch from its normal length beyond its normal length that is extensibility and elasticity what what is elasticity elasticity is nothing but when you stretch a muscle after stretching is over that 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 period is over when you release or when you stop the movement again the muscle comes to its normal length that is elasticity right a muscle is like a rubber band right so once it is stretched it extends to the limit it can stretch and once the limit is reached we and we release the muscle that means when we come to normal position again the muscle comes to its normal length that is elasticity so these four components these four properties you should keep in your mind because these principles will help you in giving a training or a teaching asanas are giving a training to the students are designing a yoga asana program to the students any population right from the kids to the elderly population depending upon the age sex and the <clears throat> knowledge or practice uh, uh, the experience in yoga so these are all the information it will be much helpful to you in designing the yoga program okay here electrical and mechanical properties right so the same properties has been divided here excitability and conductivity because what are excitability excitability we know it responds to the stimuli that's all and conductivity means it conducts the impulses conducts it conducts the impulses that means it carries the information from one part of the muscle fiber to the other part of the muscle fiber so these three uh, conductivity excitability elasticity elasticity these are all mechanical properties of um a skeletal muscle so the skeletal muscle properties can be divided into electrical properties as well as mechanical properties okay now proprioception or proprioceptors so i, I need some uh, uh, information from you answer from you in the chat box if you can uh, uh, type in uh, type what is proprioception or proprioceptors if you uh, type and the answers in the chat box it would be useful so i need uh, so please uh, respond to my uh, i mean i mean just respond uh, whether i am going in the right place. am i speedy so i just i need your uh, <laughs> feedback in the chat box so first you tell me what is proprioception along with you just tell me am i going in the right way, way i mean pace speed with regard to the class is concerned please uh, just tell me and my voice is audible so this information can be uh, given in chat box good awareness of perception and movement of body dr s parvati good well done so one answer we have got okay so i'll wait for the answers until then i'll i'll carry out with this uh, proprioception so proprioception or proprioceptors proprio right proprio receptors receptors means nothing but it receives the information right it receives yes right is it so uh, receives the information right so for an example 
we have five senses we these five senses are having receptors these these five senses receive the information in between the voice is breaking sir can you hear us sir you are not audible sir Rajikumar sir 